I'd like to call the meeting to order. Item B, the verification of public notice and approval of agenda. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Ross, seconded by Barry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item C, moment of silence to reflect on the business at hand. Item D, Potoma Area School District Strategic Plan Mission Statement, Building Positive Foundations for the Success of Our Children. Strategic Directions, Business and Community Involvement through Internship, Job Shadowing and Mentorship. Develop Marketing of the District and Community through Branding. Improve Work and People Skills. Develop, develop Parental Contact Promoting School Involvement. Build Productive Relationships with the Medical Field to Increase the Support and Open Lines of Communication to support students with mental health issues. Item E, recognition of persons wishing to address the board. Yeah. Item F, student staff presentation. Item one, Bard Public Finance, Financing Aid Facility Project. So uh, Jordan is here uh, with us tonight. You guys have the uh, handout or the, the presentation uh, physically. He's gonna go through electronically. Uh, but it's just to go through what, it, what it's like to finance a facility project as we move forward with the uh, Riverview. So, Jordan, uh, they're all yours. All right, hello everybody. I have to commend you. This is probably the fastest I've ever been on an agenda for a school board. <laughs> Very efficient. Uh, so, thank you. Um, so, as I said, my name is Jordan Masnica. I work with uh, Baird, who works with the district in a financial capacity uh, to help uh, to what, what we're discussing here, a potential referendum, and work through that process and what it could mean for a, a, the school district. So I'm going to start off uh, pretty basic here and talk about some things that maybe you already know uh, being on the board, but at, at the very least I'm hope, hoping that I can provide you with some good talking points. Uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about the district, where you stand uh, from a financial standpoint, particularly uh, with regards to the mill rate. Uh, and then we'll talk specifically about the potential referendum at hand. So first things first, uh, we always like to start with this slide, just as, as a school district, you're always con uh, considering the projects at hand, what's on the horizon. Uh, and those projects can be small in scope to very large in scope. So the district has already worked with, his, uh, with your partners at C.G. Schmidt and PRA to determine what those potential projects are um, and, and the potential scope. So very small, something as small as like a boiler, um, or, or potentially a new roof, a large uh, major renovation, or potentially even a new school. Uh, so over the past 10, 20 years, that bottom one, the new school, has, has really inflated in cost, and it's become uh, quite the project to, to think about. So when you have your scope, uh, the next step is to, to determine how can we fund these types of projects. Um, the smaller projects can be funded within operating needs. So Wisconsin school districts are limited uh, with regards to how much they can levy for operations. So one option would be to fund projects within your levy. But as I said, it's limited. So it's very hard for school districts to fund facilities projects within your levy, uh, especially where we currently sit with state funding for school districts. Another option is what's called Fund 41, and it's essentially a savings account for facility needs. Um, the caveat for this one, this fund, is that you determine that levy amount at the beginning of the school year. So you're, when you're, you're discussing it as a board, as the administration, you're figuring out what to levy, it's always ahead of time when there's a lot of uncertainty of what's going on throughout the year. Another option is Fund Balance. Um, so districts, like to maintain a certain amount of fund balance for operations. From our standpoint, fund balance is important with regards to a bond rating. Um, but in any regard, you want to maintain a certain amount of fund balance. Usually districts do not have enough fund balance to, to fund major projects. Kind of thinking about those two together, uh, another option is Fund 46. So this is similar to Fund 41 in that it's a savings account for facility needs, but it's at the end of a school year when you can make the determination. So if you're getting through the school year, you're at the end and you have a surplus, you can deposit funds into Fund 46 to use for facility needs later on. 
a, a caveat for, for this fund is that to develop it, you have to have a 10-year capital plan, which is actually pretty easy to, to develop. There's no strict rule for what that plan needs to look like, but you do have to have a 10-year plan. And then there's a five-year window from when it's created. So once you make that first deposit, you have to wait five years before any funds can be taken out. So I believe the district created or made an initial deposit in the 18-19 school year. So you're getting close to being able to use those funds. But even look at that, looking at that current balance, it, it's not enough to fund the large projects that the district is considering. So then we could talk about borrowed funds or issuing municipal bonds to, to help fund projects. And then those bonds will be repaid over uh, numerous years. So there are two ways to, for the district to issue municipal bonds. One is within the revenue limit. So we call that Fund 38. So if you issue bonds within the re revenue limit to be repaid by Fund 38, um, it's just that. It's, it's within the revenue limit, so you're using operating funds to repay. It. So any payment, even if you stretch it out over 20 years, you're still carving them out annual funds from your operating budget to repay those bonds. Well, one small caveat with this is if you issue Fund 38 bonds, you don't have to go to referendum unless you petition. Um, so if a project is over a million dollars or, or a bond issuance is over a million dollars, the community could potentially petition the district. And if they get a certain amount of votes, I believe it's uh, more than 20% of the last gubernatorial election, then if, if they get enough signatures for a petition, then the district has to go to referendum. It's very uncommon that it happens, um, but just good to know that, that that is a possibility. So the last option, uh, and is what is most commonly used for larger projects, is a referendum. Right? Going to referendum for the ability to issue municipal bonds to fund a project. So the big advantage of doing this is the repayment is not within the revenue limit. So you can levy additional funds to repay those bonds over a given amount of time. And that's ultimately what you would be going to the voters to ask for. Can we issue municipal bonds to fund this project? So before we get into the specifics of a referendum for the district, I wanted to touch on the levy uh, for the district, uh, specifically the most recent year, 21-22, because as you know, the 22-23 school year is not finalized yet. So there are Three larger components uh, to a levy, uh, to, to a district's levy, and then one that, that um, some districts took advantage of in the past uh, that your district actually did. But first we'll talk about um, the revenue limit. So this is usually the largest portion of a levy for a district, and this is what I was talking about, the, the capped amount that you can levy for operations. So if you, again, if you issue Fund 38 debt, the prepayment will come out of that revenue limit Next, uh, the district does have energy efficiency exemption debt outstanding. So this is no longer an option as of a few years ago, but uh, districts used to be able to issue what we call uh, energy efficiency exemption debt for projects that qualify for energy efficiency. So it's technically a Fund 38 debt, but the caveat is that you have the ability to levy outside the revenue limit for it. So you don't have to go to referendum, but you can levy, levy above the revenue limit. So the district um, in 2016-17 issued bonds for energy projects uh, that are currently outstanding. So they were issued as 20-year bonds uh, at an interest rate of a little over 3%. And then the last uh, more common portion of a levy for districts but small portion is the community service levy. So uh, for your district, it was $200,000 last year. Um, in the grand scheme of things, it's a smaller portion, but that is a component of the levy, and that is above the revenue limit. The last component for most school districts is uh, referendum debt, the levy to repay referendum debt. Um, so Watoma does not have any debt, uh, has not had any debt since the last referendum bonds were paid off. So the last referendum was in 1992, and the bonds were paid off in 
uh, the 20, I'm sorry, the 2011, 2012 school year. So it's been quite a, quite a bit of time since the district has had, had debt outstanding. So all that together led to a total tax levy of just over $7.6 million last year. And the question is, what does that mean for the average taxpayer? So we speak about that in terms of mill rate. Mill rate is simply a, a, a levy amount divided by the total valuation, and then we look at it on a per thousand dollar basis. So if we look specifically to last year's levy, that's $7.6 million divided by the total valuation within the district of just under $1.2 million last year, uh, and then on a per thousand dollar basis resulted in a mill rate of $6.42. Or we like to think about it in terms of like a $100,000 home, uh, makes it easier for people to understand. Move the decimal place over two spots, that's $642 per $100,000 of home value. So I want to show the trend that the, the district's mill rate has been in recent years. You can see uh, a pretty convincing downward trend. Uh, this most recent year a mill, showing the mill rate of 642. So perspective, uh, for perspective, the state average last year for K-12 school districts was uh, $8.67. So well, well below the state average. Um, and in recent years, it, it, it was about that same gap, roughly $2 below the state average. So with that knowledge, uh, we worked with uh, the administration, uh, C.G. Schmidt, your architect, to, to develop a financing plan for a potential referendum. So we, we analyzed a few options and ultimately came up with this chart to show what the potential tax impact could be for a referendum. So thinking about the updated and renovated scenario for Riverview Elementary, uh, we looked at a low end of just under three and a half, or 30 uh, million, uh, just over 30 million, and then up to roughly 33,400,000. And then we looked at what a new building would cost with a low end of 37400000 up to 41300000 So in the survey, we used the higher amounts, and that's what we're going to focus on. So looking at that, a updated and renovated scenario would result in a mill rate impact of $1.50. So what that really means is... In, that's what the, the impact for referendum debt is, is projected to be. Um, we're isolating the debt levy because, as you know, a lot can fluctuate within the operating portion of the levy. Um, but that's what we're showing, uh, taking into account an impact on state aid, what the potential impact could be for debt. For the new building scenario, it would be an impact of $1.97 per thousand evaluation. So we list a lot of assumptions in here. Um, I'm not going to read them all, but I just want you to know that we're, we're pretty conservative in our assumptions. Um, we, we would hate to get to a point where the market has moved so much uh, that we can't hit the benchmarks that, that we discussed at any given point. So I just want to let you know that we are pretty conservative in our assumptions that go, that go into the financing plan. So to show you on a little visual basis how that mill rate compares to, to your historical mill rate, we went back uh, six years, uh, which was shown on the previous slide, and then projected what it could look like going forward. So you'll notice our projection for that first year in 22-23 shows a pretty significant drop. This is pretty common statewide. So statewide, the valuation has grown 14% year over year. Um, we are actually estimating that the district is gonna grow roughly 18.5%. So very impactful for school districts. So we, a lot of school districts around the state that have referendum debt are trying to manage their levy, um, their total levy through that levy for referendum debt. But without having referendum debt, we're showing that the mill rate is gonna fall a decent amount, primarily because of that high valuation growth. 
But you'll see in future years, we're gonna layer on the new debt, so that's the green shaded portion. Um, and we're showing that impact of $1.50 uh, for the renovation scenario to bring a total mill rate up to a projected $6.83. So the new scenario, that would bring it up to $7.30. So this is just one scenario that we're showing here. So I just touched on the fact that we're pretty conservative in our, our, our assumptions that, that go into it. One uh, assumption that we have to use is what are we going to use for an interest rate? Uh, I'm sure you've seen in the news recently with everything going on in the economy, interest rates are going up pretty dramatically recently. So I wanted to show this chart of what's been happening with interest rates uh, over the past year and over the past 30 years. So the, the top right is the last year. So you can see a pretty dramatic increase. Um, kind of started going down and up, but ultimately we're kind of at the peak over the last year right now. When you compare this to what interest rates have looked over the past 30 years, which is the larger chart, we're still historically speaking relatively low interest rates. Um, so we're using, yes? Are these interest rates on your average bond issues? Or what, what so it's a good question. So what this is, is an index of municipal okay, interest rates, you. tax exempt interest sure, rates. Sure. So think of like the S&P 500 for equities, yep, sure. right? So this is just an in the index. It's not indicative of what the district could receive. Uh, it's just an index. But um, we are using a conservative interest rate of 4.75%. If we were to issue municipal bonds, 20 year municipal bonds for the district right now, it'd probably be around four, 4.25%. So we still have uh, some leeway in there. Yeah. So just remember, historically speaking, interest rates are still relatively favorable. <clears throat> Jordan, just clarify again, in all of your projections, you're using 475. Correct. Yeah. Yep, yep. Which should be high. Yeah. and. Um, so on the website, we have a, a chart very similar to this. Actually, I think this exact chart is on there. So in this, we do list all of our detailed assumptions. Um, so it does state that in a planning interest rate of 4.75%. Um, another assumption is we're amortizing the debt over 20 years. So we're actually, in our planning assumption, assuming two issuances each over 20 years. And the reason for that is that's the statutory maximum that a school district can issue debt, the maximum of 20 years. So we would look to uh, issue the debt in a phased approach potentially. So issuing uh, an amount shortly after a referendum will pass and then wait another year and issue another amount uh, for a couple of reasons. A, you don't need all the funds right away, right? So it's not always favorable to issue all the debt at once. And then B, that'll get us an additional year of repayment, so essentially 21 years of total repayment. But we can append that if interest rates start to spike dramatically to the point where then it Absolutely. negates any benefit of one year of repayment. Absolutely, yeah. So that's all fluid. That would all be a continuous um, analysis up until you get to the point of issuing the bonds. So. When we do issue bonds for school districts, it's always fixed rate bonds. So the day that we issue them, everything's locked in. Sure. Um, but yeah, the, the repayments can always uh, change over time. I mentioned earlier that because of the valuation growth, a lot of school districts are analyzing what they want to levy for referendum debt. So once you issue the bonds, you have to levy a minimum amount to make the debt payments. But there's no maximum that you can levy. So one benefit of having referendum debt, I mean, if you're going to have debt, one benefit is that you can levy more to stabilize the overall mill rate if it makes sense to do so. So a lot of districts right now are use, uh, levying additional funds and prepaying their debt that's currently outstanding, uh, alleviating some of that interest rate cost along the way. So the last thing I'll touch on, um, and I'm sure this may have been discussed already, but just from a timing standpoint, um, if you're looking for, uh, I think the most likely option would be an April referendum, just know that um, it has to be finalized and filed with the, the municipal clerk 70 days ahead of time. So with the coming upcoming April 4th election, you're looking at 
a firm deadline of uh, January 24th to make that, that decision and have everything filed. Um, and then if uh, survey results come back and you're looking at a further referendum uh, date, just know that as of a few years ago, you can only hold referendums on normal election cycles. So you used to be able to hold special elections if you want, but now you can only have them on normal election cycles. So uh, next year is a year where you can only hold it in spring. And then the following year you have uh, uh, both spring and fall options. So just keep that in the back of your mind. That's all I have. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, appreciate your time, and you know, if you guys discuss this further, obviously, if you have any follow-up finance-related questions, um, you know, send them our way. Is that is that index something that's publicly available? Can you look at that? Or yeah. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure where you would pull the data from. <laughs> well, I mean, I would never really have any interest in looking at it outside of our current, you know, the scope for Right. So, if you want to look it up, it's called uh, MMD, uh, Municipal Market Data, but it's called MMD, and specifically. We uh, illustrate here the 20-year MMD rate. Um, but again, uh, you know, we're showing a rate here, but this is not what you would get. This is just a national index that, that we essentially price bonds based off of. But uh, is it safe to assume that whatever rate we would have gotten would increase or decrease along with this index? Yeah, generally, yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, generally, the, the same movements there would coincide with what the district We should have a favorable credit rate having no debt and a healthy fund balance, so we would be on the lower end of issues, I think. But right. Uh, so generally, Wisconsin districts have very good credit. Sure. Um, you know, there, there's, no, there's no junk bonds in Wisconsin. Yeah. It's all high credit, and it's a function of how schools are funded, um, the fact that it's that you went to referendum, the authorities there to issue the bonds, and then the district has the ability to levy to repay it, an unlimited levy to repay the debt. So we'll be low, but we'll move with the index. Correct. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to administrative reports. Um, Tom, anything to add? Yeah, just a couple things. One. Um, Nurse Carey has worked really hard to get uh, COVID-19 testing um, a couple of days a week at the World War II um, Memorial. Uh, however, there's been some logistical issues uh, that's coming to play, uh, no, no fault of hers. Um, so we have it this week. I don't know where we're going to be at after this week um, as far as having it. She's still trying to work with the state to try to get someone here to do it. So I'll, I'll keep you guys up to date. just wanted to, we've had uh, families using it, so I think it's important. It's nice for us to have it. Um, but hopefully after this week we'll be able to continue. And uh, secondly, I just, uh, you know, we did the reunification and retention um, project uh, a few years ago before COVID hit. And uh, we sort of had like five year plaques, 10 year plaques, 15. So uh, Barry Master Cole wasn't there for the teacher in service, but uh, it's his, uh, I'm sure he knows where his plaque is. Um, <laughs> the of the country in. So yeah. 10 years. <laughs> That was it. Thank you. Okay. Um, administrators, let's start with our host, uh, Doug. Anything to add? Nothing at this time. All right. Jim? Um, good start to school year. Uh, happy with the kids so far. Um, <laughs> so far. <laughs> I think we're really happy with our new hires, including Mr. B. Oh, there we go. Nice. Great. Um, Caitlin, anything to add? That's me. All right. Jewel? Oh, not at this time. All right. Uh, Jennifer. Um, Adam is at a volleyball. We just wanted to reiterate that I or ask that I reiterate the thank you, um, to Megan and Alyssa and the coaches for this weekend. It was a huge soccer tournament, volleyball tournament, and everything went very well. We have lots of compliments again. So Adam just wanted to send out a thank you again to everybody. Um, and I would just add it, it, I would say it was very difficult to read today's agenda for 2A, 1, 2, and 3. So um, want that to be sent. All right. Michael, anything to add? Nope, not at this time. All right. Sierra? Nothing to add. Eric? No, not that at no. this time. <laughs> Cindy? I don't know. All right. Board members, anything to report on? Uh, 
Well, I missed the last meeting because I was at a mental health behavior summit for two days through our CESA group, and I'd encourage that we send some of our teachers next year. It was, it was very good. Um, a lot of good speakers and everything else. It's always the same time of the year? Yeah. It's always in fall? In the fall, okay. yeah, because they know they have a hard time trying to get stuff sure. during school time. So. Okay. All right. And for our student council, Ms. Kylie Klein. So we will normally have Bridget Gunderson here, okay. but obviously she's playing a volleyball game tonight, okay. so she won't be here. So next time you guys will meet her. Um, we don't have an official report because we had our first meeting last last Thursday. Um, it was pretty short. It was cut by some Alice drills and other things <laughs> that were going on. So we primarily just discussed um, trying to get freshmen involved and homecoming planning. But we'll have the report next time. Perfect. <laughs> Can't wait. All right. Moving on to item H, consent agenda. Um, item one, minutes. I'll entertain a motion for item A, August 8, 2022, monthly meeting. Move, move, move. Second. Motion by Adam, second by Barry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Item B, August 15, 2022, work meeting. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Motion by Dawn, second by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item two, staffing. Item A, retirement resignation. Item one, Thomas Reinheimer, Watoma Area School District Administrator. I'm looking for a motion. I will be grudgingly making <laughs> I'd like to investigate that before we continue. Uh, I'll second it, begrudgingly. Motion by Ross, second by Barry. Any further discussion? There will be a lot of discussion. Yeah. <laughs> have a week or so. Tom, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Item two, Cynthia Riley. Hi. <laughs> What's going on here? Oh my goodness. Oh, with Tom Mary School District Chief Financial Officer. And your motion. I'll be gradually make that motion as well. I'll second it. Motion by John, second by Jeanette. Any further discussion? Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. All right. Yeah. Moving on. Item three, Wayne Craig, Potomac Area School District Lead Maintenance Director. I'll entertain a motion. So approved. Second. Motion by Barry, second by Ross. Any further discussion? Thank you to Wayne Craig for his service to the district in many capacities. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item four, John Epping, Parkside School Program Support Assistant, looking for a motion. Move to approve. I second it. Motion by Ross, seconded by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item five, uh, Lydia Zuniga, Watoma High School, Cook um, One. Um, entertain a motion. I make the motion. I'll second. Motion by Karen, seconded by John. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item B, employment. I'll entertain a motion to take item one through nine. So moved. I'll second it. Motion by Ross, second by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, item 10 and 11, um, I can combine those, right, because there is information only, no voting necessary, correct? Yeah. Okay. Item 10, information only. Watoma High School, Cook 1, and then item 11 is information only, Rearview Elementary Program Support Assistant, right? Okay. All right. Um, item 1, action items. 1, business and finance. Item A, approve the August 22 uh, Treasurer's Report. Make a motion to approve as printed. And I'll second that. Motion by Karen, seconded by Don. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item B, approve the vouchers and payroll. Make motion to approve the vouchers of payroll as printed. I'll second it. 
Motion by Karen, seconded by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item C, approve the district classroom maintenance project. Um, per the agenda item, um, it's a pretty detailed agenda item. I would recommend the board approve the district classroom maintenance project as presented. Uh, we will use funding from Governor Eber's most recent uh, deposit to the school district uh, to fund that project. Looking for a motion? Move to approve. Second. Motion by Adams, seconded by Barry. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item two, policy. Um, item A, approve the community survey for review elementary building project. Uh, so the very next day um, after our last meeting, you guys provided us with a lot of great um, suggestions and what you wanted to see. Uh, so we met with Rob, um, we got those in. I would say the only thing that really changed that you wouldn't know about, um, it would be on page one, two, three, four. Um, Riverview was actually on 6.7 acres. So they got that accurate. Uh, and based on their, um, how they uh, formulate the need for space for a brand new school, you really only need 15 acres to do that. So it's like 10 acres for a building, and then it's um, an, an acre per 100 kids. So they figured 450 kids, which is a high end estimate, so that would get you up to 15. Now, a lot could be purchased, you know, a 40 acre lot could be purchased, but at the bare minimum, you have to have 15 acres. So I thought that'd be nice for the, uh, the people taking the survey to know that you don't have to have a 40 acre lot. If so chosen, that's fine. Uh, but you have to have at least 15 acres uh, for a new school. Besides that, um, made sure that all of your other suggestions and changes were added. Um, as Jordan stated on uh, page five, again, you can see um, the 533 mill rate, and then it goes up. Um, Bayer changed a little bit of the wording just to make sure that it fit what they wanted. Um, they moved uh, your suggestion to move district um, future planning to the back was done. Um, actually, this whole thing, and I, I guess I didn't know this because I wasn't listening very well, but it's, it's optional. Um, so you, there are only a couple things that you really have to fill out to get the survey to go forward if you're doing it electronically, but all these other things are pretty much optional. Um, so when I said we were concerned about optional, I said don't worry about it, pretty much the whole thing's optional, except for the major components of it. Sure. So just so you guys are aware of that. So tomorrow morning, um, I'll email Rob and let him know if you guys are good to go. It goes to the printers, uh, the timeline again, if um, I think I added it, uh, Time. Let me just make sure I have it accurate for you guys. Um, so we go to the proofer tomorrow. It would go to the printer on Thursday. Um, we would email the survey to the staff on the 28th. Then they get in the mailbox by October 5th. Email the survey on October 5th. Um, during the window, there's going to be a lot of reminder emails. Katie has a whole um, schedule of uh, communications that she'll be putting out, whether it be through social media, whether it be through Infinite Campus. Uh, that we'll be doing also um, that she's working with C.G. Schmidt. So, so we're uh, getting right right into crunch time now, um, uh, where it's going to go out. So, yeah. um, any things that you any cons no. are we can still tweak. We have one no. more chance no. to tweak. No. 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 Just go for a clarification. Yes, sir. We initially talked about 40 to 80 acres, and I think we kind of settled on 40, and then we, we budgeted for 40. Did the budget number change? I know the land wasn't a huge part of our numbers, but we had the same numbers in there. Even though we're down to maybe yes. only needing 15, correct? Yeah, and so the same the same number. Okay. So it's it's really high. Now. It's like 991,000, yeah. I believe. Yeah. So and then my additional question with that would be, if if you look at 15 acres for you or any other administrators in the room, are we comfortable that that's going to give us all we need for our athletic fields and all the things that we think we need for the new school? Yeah, I think what, if you know this survey goes through and it, it looks like people are um, interested in it. I guess I would recommend to go a little further than 15. Yeah, yeah. 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 I agree. Um, and, and just so you guys are aware, I'm, I'm meeting with Tommy Bowler about um, a couple other items, but I'm again just going to bring up to him if this does move forward as we go across again that Lake Ridge subdivision, what is that looking like right now for them? Um, are they willing to do some trading with us if, if this were to go through um, type thing? So we're meeting this Friday. Sure. I, I don't mind the number, to Ross's point, I don't mind the acreage number being lower and leaving the budget on the same. So yeah. we can say we got 25 yeah. acres and came in, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. under budget. Yeah. And those funds maybe need to be used yeah. somewhere else. 
Yeah. Uh, exactly. Know, so yeah, or, we, or you can pay we got more land than we budgeted for yeah. and, and put that bumper significantly under budget yeah. on the project. That's right. a nice thing about the Argus because it's going to be early on in the project development. Yep. Yeah. So. For me, this looks much, much better than the mm -hmm. original version, and that was fine. I think the, the tweaks that were made to it, it's much more presentable to, to someone who's going to open their mail on this. Yeah. Right. It, was, it was cute because Jordan uh, was said his presentation to me, and he said uh, um, he had light new. Uh, and I said, well, I said, that may not sit well with the board, so I would use the words updated and renovated. And, uh, so, and thank you for that. Uh, so, yeah, so that we're not doing used cars. <laughs> so he didn't know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. anyway, so thank you. I will get with Rob. We'll get with Rob tomorrow morning uh, and tell him we're ready to move forward. Very good. All right. <coughs> motion, please. Move to approve the uh, survey as presented. Second. Motion by Adams. Second by Barry. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item B. Approve the new revised board policies, volume 31, number two, first consideration. Uh, so it's that time of year again uh, when the you know, the new set of uh, policies are revised or added uh, based on laws that have gone through or things that have occurred legally. Um, so it's that you know, in your packet, first round, uh, your chance to look. Any questions you have this time, we can address. Uh, you know, before we get to second consideration, we can address again um, and, and tweak. But any concerns you guys have on the first round? No. Okay. Nothing jumped off that anything to me. Is there anything that you would point out that was a dramatic change? Not that it seems. No, actually, it was uh, act for for major changes. They were pretty basic. Um, yeah, there was nothing controversial um, really to them. And, and again, a lot of it um, uh, does function on what's going on in society right now. For example, uh, the one about um, you can't post pictures, photos of social media, but they never really had like you can post your own children yeah. to social media. So I'm sure someone either got in trouble or something and said, "Listen, it's my kid." Like I, you know, so then that gets tweaked to say. But you can your own children. You can post them to social media. Any, you know things like that yeah. that occurred. Um, I did put in my board report. Um, there's always technical corrections that come across, and those are just again they're not major changes. They might be words or punctuation. So I went through those. I, I gave him the approval to go through those. But yeah, nothing significant in these. Looking for a motion. I move to approve the first consideration. I'll second it. Motion by Adam. Second by Jeanette. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, oh, uh, I can't the next word. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, item three, negotiations personnel. Item um, A, approve the Toma High School health teacher contract addendum. Yeah, so believe it or not, you know, Jen pulled out a, a choir teacher last second uh, with Chris <laughs> Thomas W. Good who you met tonight. Um, and, uh, but believe we. We still couldn't find a halftime health, halftime physical education teacher. And, it's, and so Jen and uh, Caitlin are still working hard um, to make that happen. Hopefully this semester there may be a graduate uh, that they can get. Um, so at the elementary level, uh, Caitlin has been doing an excellent job teaching some physical education herself. All right, Caitlin. Um, yes, yeah. 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 And, um, and, uh, and, yeah. and, and other people have been filling in also. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I think yeah. Tom can go over there a little bit. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Free time now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, and then Jen, um, um, Brittany was able to pick up um, during her prep time uh, a health course, and then Adam is teaching some health courses during what would be his AD time. Um, Adam, because he's getting paid in that AD realm, really does not need an extension. Uh, but the, this motion we're looking for is to um, uh, extend, um, do an extension of contract for Brittany uh, to pay her during her prep time to cover the health course. We've done it before uh, for staff who who picked that up first. So that's the, that's the motion we're looking for um, for this item. Any President, before I make the motion, I will abstain. Well noted, Barry. Mr. Cole will abstain. I will make the motion to approve it as presented. I'll, I'll second. second it. <laughs> motion by Ross, second by Karen. I was in a district today that they had to approve almost almost every core subject in the high school, all of them have multiple. So for us to have one, right now, this is a blessing, so yeah, it could be a lot, a lot uh, different. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 3B, approve leave of absence request. Sure. So uh, Carl Asher approached Mr. Beatty and I. Carl's here today. Well, uh, here. And so, um, you know, Carl has the five paid time off days, so he inquired about those. Um, for a trip, and so obviously I have no issue uh, with that. And then you would need three unpaid leave days. When you do that, the board becomes involved. 
Um, as you see, as you see, the trip is a sort of an extenuating trip. It's a once in a four year for Gabe, uh, who is playing basketball at Lakeland. They're going to Italy. Spain. Thank you. Close. And um, so, uh, Carl, um, Carl would make sure he got it out in advance, so he's got to get his tickets and, and all those type of things. Um, Doug and I, uh, again, extenuating circumstance. Um, have no issue with this. Uh, Doug will be able to secure a sub for Carl uh, yeah. in May. Tom can sub. Yeah, there you go. Tom can sub. Cindy can sub. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's just work until June 3rd. This is no special compensation. This is all per policy. Yep. Right. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He can get his five paid time off days. The board approves the three unpaid. Um, again, we always look at the circumstances of uh, that are given. It's not a trip to Mexico. He's not taking, you know, like uh, going to, um, uh, to take his family to Mexico. He's looking to to go see his son play college basketball um, in Spain. And again, it won't occur again during his four years. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Ross, seconded by Don. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Have fun. Cha-ching, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. start your fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Item J, Board Governance 1. Discussion only, WASB, Regional and Workshop Meeting and Trust. So, we have a, I think you're going to have a lot of things coming up in October with a potentially, well, a fourth meeting or a second meeting on the fourth Monday for an annual meeting, budget hearing, um, potential interviewing. I don't know. It uh, depends uh, on how that all works out. Um, also, uh, potential open houses at Riverview um, for, the, for the community to come in and, and look through that process as they start to fill out the survey. So a lot of things coming up in October, November. But I wanted to let you know, though, and you probably received these, that there is a regional meeting in the Dell on the 20th. Um, 4 o'clock is the um, 4 to 4.30 is the pre-regional meeting where they do a training. And I think this one is on effective, um, running effective board meetings. Um, and then obviously then it's the 6 o'clock meeting um, where they uh, speak and they give out awards and those type of things. So I wanted to see if, uh, if you were interested in doing it or if people are interested, we can get a van. We can take the Hornet band down and uh, and go. Um, but just, I did want to also pile on you guys in October because you have a lot of things you potentially could be going on. So we could probably wait and discuss this at the October board meeting, which I believe is the 10th. 10th. So it gives us 10 days. I think we would have time to still register. Yeah, for then. We'd better go on a little bit more about our agenda then. Yeah, yeah. We, we might know a little bit more. So, um, so do you guys want to wait and bring it back yeah. on the 10th? Yeah. Or? yeah, let's wait on that. So okay. the meeting is on the uh, 20th, 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 20th. Yeah. So it'll be 10 days later. Okay. And, and WSB is never opposed to making money, so I think they'll, they'll definitely yeah. take our make <laughs> registration. Yeah. 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 All right, so we'll put that on the October agenda. All right, so we'll move that okay. to there. And then item two, discussion only, legislative update. Mr. Nesipola. The only thing really um, uh, Senator Ball had to say was uh, they did approve, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, out of the 90 million that was for the ERP funds were approved, uh, our governor uh, was looking at uh, 15 million uh, of that money going towards the health programs, I believe, and 75 million to public schools, which would mean roughly 91 dollars and not change per student. Uh, how would that would affect us directly? I think we got 128 thousand. Okay. It's already already. We already got it. It's 129,030. Oh, <laughs> All right. I think the other, the other thing is the, the politics right now with the five billion surplus and Governor, you were saying we need two billion for education and sort of throw that highball price yeah. out there and then the response from the, um, the other party. Um, so it's going to become fairly contentious yeah. until someone's elected. Um, you know how are they going to use that funding as they get into the 23-25 biannual, biannual budget, which will be crucial to public schools. Again, as you'll notice, there, when I've talked about this before, a lot of school districts are running operating referendums um, mm -hmm. to survive. And so this April and this fall, also. Mm -hmm. So, um, item K board suggested future agenda items. Our monthly meeting will be on Monday, October 10th, 2022, at 6 15 in the Riverview Elementary Gymnasium. If you have any agenda items, please let Tom uh, know of that. <coughs> Item L adjourn to closed executive session. To close session A under statute 19.851F, considering the social or personal histories of specific persons, preliminary consideration of specific personnel problems, or the investigation of charges against specific persons, which if discussed in public, 
would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person uh, referred to in such histories or data or involved in such problems or investigations. B, under statutes 19.851C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility to discuss the district administrator selection process and adjourn. Roll call, please. Ross Peterson. Yes. Barry Piasky. Yes. Barry Mastical. Yes. Nicole Lear. Yes. Jeanette Holm. Yes. John Peterson. Yes. Adam Henning. Yes. We will convene in here in five minutes. Um, the board will meet first. All parties will.